We are now in section six, the practice capability development for the item practice. The syllabus for the exam is to understand how the ITIL capability model can be used to develop the practice. In particular, explain how the capability criteria support the practice capability development. We first look at the practice capability levels. The practice success factors that we noted earlier cannot be developed overnight. The ITIL maturity model defines the following capability levels applicable to any management practice. Level one, the practice is not well organized. It is performed as initial or intuitive. It may occasionally or partially achieve its purpose through an incomplete set of activities, which means that the practice is not at all mature. The actual maturity begins from level two onwards. Level two is where the practice systematically achieves its purpose. This is the first time the purpose is achieved but through a basic set of activities supported by specialized resources. Moving up to level three, the practice is now well-defined and it achieves its purpose in an organized way rather than a, just a basic set of activities. And instead of using just specialized resources, it uses dedicated resources and relies on inputs from other practices as well that are integrated into a service management system. Now comes level four, where the practice is, is achieving its purpose in a highly organized way, not just an organized way and its performance is continually measured and assessed within the context of the service management system. And then finally, the level five is where the practice is continually improving the organization capabilities associated with its purpose, meaning there is a regular review of the practice and improvements are made, which contributes to the organization's capability improvement. This picture shows that how the overall capability criteria are designed. We have 34 practices in ITIL, and each practice has two to four practice success factors or PSF, which are required for the practice to fulfill its purpose. And then uh, the capability criteria are defined for each of the PSF and mapped to the four dimensions of service management. And we will understand this more as we move forward. So it means that for each practice, the ITIL maturity model defines criteria for every capability level from level two to level five. And these can be used to assess the practice ability to fulfill its purpose and contribute to the service value system of the organization. And as I mentioned, each criterion is mapped to one of the four dimensions of the service management and to the supported capability level. The higher the capability level between one to five, the more comprehensive realization of the practice is expected. For example, criteria related to the practice automation are typically defined at level three or higher because effective automation is only possible if the practice is well-defined and organized. There are some practices, not the item practice, where the automation can occur even at level two. But in general, automation happens at level three and up. And the same is the case here for this practice. Automation happens at level three and above. Now, we have a table, a couple of slides on the, actually four slides coming up on the, the, the criteria against each practice success factor, uh, indicating the capability level and the dimension. Now, there are several entries here, so we'll take a look at these now. For the PSF, ensuring that the organization has relevant information about its IT assets throughout their life cycle. Um, when the key users of the IT asset information and their requirements are identified. And also when the information about the IT assets is available when needed and meets user requirements, those are at level two. And again, the dimensions are mentioned. Value streams and the other one is information and technology. At level three, the procedures for requesting and obtaining IT asset information are defined and communicated to relevant stakeholders. Also, responsibility for the management of IT assets information is clearly defined as well as IT asset information covers relevant details about the third party services. Then we come to level four for the same practice success factor in which the IT asset information is managed using an integrated information system and the quality and availability of that IT asset information are measured and reported. And finally at level five, the quality and availability of the IT asset information are continually reviewed and improved. Then we go to the Next PSF, which is ensuring that the utilization of the IT assets is continually monitored and optimized. 
At level two, we have one entry wherein the information about the IT asset utilization is gathered and analyzed. At level three, we have several entries coming from the various dimensions of service management wherein organization's requirements for optimizing IT asset utilization are identified and agreed. Then the information about that utilization is managed using an integrated information system. The relevant stakeholders know how they should optimize the IT asset utilization. The sourcing options are considered to optimize IT asset utilization. Alternative technology solutions are considered to optimize IT utilization. Then at level four, the IT asset utilization is measured and reported and level five, that is utilization is regularly reviewed and continually improved. So capability development, there are some guidances here. As we know, the management practices should support the achievement of the organization's objectives and enable creation of value for the stakeholders. Secondly, depending on the service provider strategy, positioning and business and operating models, some practices may be more important and therefore require a higher level of capability, which means there is no organization that requires all the 34 management practices to be at capability level five. But a higher capability level provides higher assurance of the fulfillment of the practice purpose. But it comes with a cost. There can be a cost of management, cost of automation, cost of training, and so on. Therefore, to achieve the optimal performance with sufficient level of assurance, organizations should define a target capability level for each of these management practices. And in this case, for the item practice. This picture shows us or depicts the capability development steps and levels. We see here at level one, it is initial or intuitive. At level two, we have the following steps of the ladder included. The purpose and objectives are clear. Stakeholders and resources are known. Processes and activities are known. Risks and responsibilities are also clear. And the tools and procedures as well. At level three, the dependencies and integration occur. Level four, uh, continually measured and assessed, the measurement and reporting step of the ladder. And continually improving level five means continually improvement occurs. <clears throat> 